But the final thing is that when you start with this groundswell, you're boycotting institutions that are promoting Marxist ideology, and you're offering candidates, right, and for your own purposes and building a parallel economy. The final stage that we have to get to eventually is the full restoration of Christian social order and Christian culture. An actual Christian culture that starts to arise out of these movements. That's the ultimate goal that we have to be shooting for in this, in, at least in the physical, earthly sense of the term of goal. So what do I mean by this? Many people, when they think in the United States, at least in our particular circles of many Christendoms, many of us rightly think of St. Mary's, Kansas, right? I think that's probably the best example that you see in these United States. Of course, there's the small, very small, but isolated community around Clear Creek Abbey. Of course, there's another great community out by Silver City, New Mexico, right, with the traditional uh, Benedictines with, affiliated with the SSPX that are over there. And then, of course, you even have in places like, for instance, New Haven, where I was this last week, right, New Haven, Massachusetts. Massachusetts is a gorgeous state on an agricultural level, but a godless state in the spiritual sense because it's 87% leftist. Like, it's, it's a very dark place spiritually. All those old Puritan churches, including where Jonathan Edwards preached sinners in the hands of an angry God, right? That famous sermon that rocked America, um, literally now have pride flags and BLM flags on the outside, just here, there, and everywhere. All those places are overrun. But you even see in dark places like that, in places like New Haven, right? Catholic culture starting to pop up around religious communities, etc. But you can do that in your own city, even if your city has a million people in it. You start small. You do the functions that you know that you need, the parallel economy, the Catholic school, the Catholic parish, etc. But then you build out from that through interaction with one another, right? With the ultimate goal of let's restore all things in Christ and build an actual Catholic civilization step by step out of this. Whether you're in a small town, it's going to be much easier for you in that case, or in a large city, this is fundamentally possible. So, concluding thought, at least on this, is that all Catholics have to be proactive. Male or female, young, old, rich or poor, etc., have to be proactive in this method. My friends and I, right, who you guys have seen in some of these videos, right, we're going back out on the streets this summer, right, in order to host events. But some of these events aren't protesting wickedness. Some of them are just getting involved in the community like, okay, you guys who are well known for going on the street corner and doing the rosary, you're now at the soup kitchen. Or maybe on first Saturdays, another idea for people, go and just hold a rosary rally, a generic rosary rally in your city. Because many cities in Western Christendom were protected for centuries from communist overthrowing, specifically because the people in those towns, in these small little French and German and Italian towns and Spanish towns, were specifically going to the street every single month and praying to the Lord that their city would never be overcome by communism. Literally, most people, most Catholics don't even know that, but pious Catholics would just go out to the streets back in the day and pray that their city would never be overcome by communism. Do the same thing, and you'll see what happens. And so that that's my call that I think people need to take upon themselves, to take up the cross in that sense that Pope Urban described, but for their own society today, to fight against if you will, the spiritual infidelity that's going rampant 24-7 all over the place. Oh.